Today is the final lecture of this course. And it is really a day that puts together many things you learn since the beginning of this lecture. OK, so we will cover quite a bit of subjects. First, we will talk about, we will complete the proof proof on existence of, of full set of independent eigenvectors. When lambda i's are all distinct. We finished, we started this, but we could not complete it. We ran out of time, so we will go over it quickly. Then we'll talk about symmetric matrices. And and there eigenvalues also Hermitian matrices. And then we will talk about positive definiteness, definite. And the last one will be singular value decomposition. Okay, so we'll cover all these today. And these are very important topics. These are really the fruits of linear algebra. And in the problem session this afternoon, later tonight, We'll do lots of example on this. So during the lecture, I'm not going to do too much examples so that we can cover the topics in the lecture. And in the problem session tonight, we will record that as well. We will give you, we will solve examples on that. Okay, let's start now. So la last week, we said that the theorem was if a matrix A, n by n matrix, of course, has n distinct eigenvalues, lambda i, lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n. Distinct means what? Lambda i is different from lambda j if i is different from j. Okay, this is what this thing means. So no two eigenvalues are the same. So you have n different eigenvalues. Then a has n eigen independent dependent eigenvectors. So let's prove it here. Remember that independence was defined like this. If you have x1, x2, xn in Rn, what does this mean? These are column vectors with n components, right? Like this. So this is like uh, alpha 1, alpha n. So it has n components. That's what it means. So independent means that this equation
has, if, if this has only one solution, and that solution is that C1, C2, Cn has to be zero. If the only solution, I need a better pen. Amen. for this equation is C1 equal to C2 equal to Cn equal to zero, then X1, X2, Xn are independent, right? So the Remember, just give you an example. If you have x1 is 1, 0, x2 is 1, 1, let's say, and I want to find the solution for this, c1, x1 plus c2, x2 equal to 0. So then you have c1, 1, 0 plus c2, 1, 1 equal to 0 means this, right? This zero is a vector zero. If you understand it from the context. So from here, what do you have? C1 plus C2 is equal to zero from the first line. The second line says C2 is equal to zero. This means C2 is equal to zero. You substitute it here. That means C1 is also equal to zero. And what would that mean? It would mean these two vectors are independent, right? So let's remember that. So now let's go back to our eigenvectors. Okay, first of all, if we have n distinct eigenvalues, do we have n eigenvectors? Is there any problem about that? Why is that? Because eigenvalue means what? A minus lambda i determinant is equal to zero, right? When determinant is equal to zero, that means the null space of A minus lambda i, lambda i has at least dimension one. Therefore, you can find one vector. If it is dimension one, then you can find one vector that spans the null space, one dimensional null space, at least one. But we are saying they are distinct. Therefore, for every lambda i, the null space of this has dimension one. Therefore, it has solution. That is the assumption. So provided that, so what does that mean? First of all, let's talk about two eigenvectors in this n. When you have n eigenvectors here, let's see if any two of them are, can be dependent, OK? So let's say uh, any pair of eigenvectors in the set is x1 and x2. Let's assume they are linearly dependent. Let's assume x1, x2 are dependent. What does that mean? What, does, what would that mean? They are dependent means, are you following? They are dependent means what? C1 times x1, C2 times x2 is equal to 0, right? That's what it would mean. And the only solution, if we are going to see if if we can find C1 and C2 not zero, not both of them zero that satisfies the equation, then they would say they are dependent, okay? If this is satisfied, okay, then we have just, this is a vector, isn't it? This is just zero, 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 whatever. This is a zero vector. So we just say A times this. What would this be? C is just a constant, it comes out like C A X1, C2 A 
x2. What is ax1 since x1 is an eigenvector? What is it? Lambda 1 x1. Very good. So this is c1 lambda 1 x1 plus what is ax2? c2 lambda 2 x2. And what is that equal to? It's a times 0, so it is 0. Okay? <coughs> now, there are two possibilities here. Let's say there are two possibilities. Need white chalk. Let's say lambda one is different from zero. Okay? Then lambda one equal to zero. If lambda one is equal to zero, then what do you have here? This becomes this portion becomes zero, right? Independent of C1. Then what would that mean here? C2, lambda 2, x2 is equal to 0. Can lambda 2 be 0 as well? No. Why is that? They are distinct, right? So if lambda 1 is equal to 0, then lambda 2 cannot be 0 because they are distinct. So therefore, lambda 2 is not 0. Can x2 be 0? Can it be 0? No. It's an eigenvector, right? It is spanning the one-dimensional null space. Therefore, zero cannot span anything other than the zero space. Therefore, x2 is not zero. So what do you find out? c2 is zero. If c2 is zero, then you come here, then c1 is zero. So that means that would mean what? The only solution is c1 and c2 is zero. So in this case, from this explanation, so lambda so C1, C2 is 0, and that would mean C1 is 0. So therefore, lambda 1 equal to 0, that would mean C1 and C2 has to be 0 for this to be satisfied. OK, if lambda 1 is different from 0, if it is different from 0, then you have C1 lambda 1 plus C2 lambda 2 x2 is equal to 0. Divide this by lambda 1. From here, you have c1 x1, c1 x1 plus c2 lambda 2 over lambda 1 x2 is equal to 0. And then you had there c1 x1 plus c2 x2 is equal to 0. You subtract them. What do you get? OK. If you subtract them, you get here, this would cancel, right? C2 minus 1 minus lambda 2 over lambda 1, x2 is equal to 0. Again, so how can I satisfy this? One way is that this factor has to be 0. Can this be 0? Because lambda 2 and lambda 1 cannot be equal. They are distinct. That's the whole assumption. So this is non-zero. X2 cannot be 0. It's an eigenvector. Therefore, C2 is 0. And if C2 is 0, then what do you have from here? C1 is 0. So therefore, none of the two eigenvectors can be dependent. So we've proved this for 2 for the time being. Now we go to the general case. OK? After that's done, let's talk about now n eigenvectors, OK? So in general, in for, for the n eigenvectors, vectors, assume they are dependent. So this is proof by contradiction, right? So what do we say then? C1, x1 plus C2, X2, plus Cn, Xn has to be equal to 0. OK? We do the same trick. OK? This, if this, if the only solution, solution 
is C1 equal to C2 equal to Cn equal to 0, then X1, X2, Xn are linearly dependent. Okay, if this is the case, let me just multiply this with A, both sides, right? So this becomes what? C1 lambda 1 x1 plus C2 lambda 2 x2 Cn lambda n xn is equal to 0. So assume, so there are again two cases like that, right? If lambda 1, if lambda 1 is equal to 0, what happens? Then that would mean C2 lambda 2 x2 Cn lambda n xn is equal to 0. And what would that mean? Somebody tell me, what, what does this mean if this is satisfied? These are dependent. If this is satisfied, and if lambda 1 is equal to 0, that between none of the other lambdas are not 0. Therefore, x2, x, x2, x3, xn are dependent, OK? If they are dependent, then what can I say? I can just continue from here, right? Then I can continue. So I can say that if these are dependent, then I can write, let me call this um, alpha 2x2, alpha n, xn. So that would mean these are equal to 0, of course. Then that would mean that you have a times alpha 2 x2 alpha n xn is equal to 0. In other words, alpha 2 lambda 2 x2 alpha n lambda n xn is equal to 0. Right? Can I say that can alpha 2 or any one of them be 0? No. Because if alpha 1 is 0, then no other alphas, no other, if lambda 1 is 0, no other lambdas can be 0. Right? So solve for divide by x2. So you have alpha 2 x2 plus alpha n over alpha n times lambda n over lambda 2 xn is equal to 0. If you subtract these two together, what do you have? OK, so subtract this and this. So you have alpha 3, 1 minus lambda 3 over lambda 2, x3, all the way alpha n, 1 minus lambda n over lambda 2, xn is equal to 0. OK? So can, do you have any one of these equal to 0? No. So what does this mean? This means what? So x3, xn are linearly dependent, right? So you would go all the way like this, right? We would do the same thing over and over and over. And then what are we going to have? We will have beta n minus 1, xn minus 1, OK? You continue like this plus beta n xn is equal to 0. Can this be equal to 0? Can this be satisfied? This is the, what did I for, prove first? The first thing I proved was the two vectors. I erased it, right? Two vectors cannot be linearly dependent. That's the first thing I proved, right? So this can, this, the only solution for this is Beta n minus 1, beta n is 0. So therefore, that would mean beta n minus 2 is 0. Beta, and all the way, it would mean that c1 is 0, right? 
If alpha one different from zero, it wouldn't make any difference. In that case, you would solve and subtract. And last week, I did that already. OK? So therefore, this is a magical way to see that when you have n, n distinct eigenvalues, necessarily the corresponding eigenvectors are, they form a set of linearly independent vectors. OK? Who understood this proof? Good. Please go over the video. OK, this is essential to understand this result. So I just, of course, did not rigorously complete all these steps because last week I spent some time on it. So what does this mean then? You have a x1 is equal to lambda 1 x1. OK, this is what? A vector, right? This is a column vector, column vector. A x2 is equal to lambda 2 x2. A xn is equal to lambda n xn. If you put these all together, so that would mean A x1, A x2, A x3, A xn. So these are n columns. And what is that equal to? That is lambda 1 x1, lambda 2 x2, and lambda n xn. OK? So you can just take A as a common factor, take it out. Then you have A x1 x2 xn. So this, you can call this matrix as x, x matrix. Columns are the eigenvectors, and these are Linearly independent eigenvectors. Okay? That's where it is invertible, right? It is non singular. And this side, you can write it as x1, x2, xn times lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n. What is this? It's again x. So you have this. Nice, very nice relationship. Ax is equal to x times lambda. So you call this capital lambda. OK? Since x is invertible, since x has independent columns, of course, I like it more when I say linearly independent, but again, you understand what I mean. Independent columns, x inverse exists. Hence, you have x inverse ax is equal to lambda. So this is called a similarity transformation. Of course, this is a very special similarity transformation. So in general, similarity transformation is x inverse ax is a similarity transformation for a, even if it is equal to diagonal or not. But this one is called diagonalization of a. OK? So if a matrix A has n linearly independent eigenvectors, then you can form a matrix, as, and you can take the columns of that matrix as the eigenvectors. And if you apply this similarity transformation, you will get a diagonal matrix. Okay? We will do examples on this this afternoon, this evening, rather to say. Okay? Any questions so far? So we are done with the first topic. OK, now we go to the next one. Now, what is a symmetric matrix? Think of this matrix, for example, 1, minus 2, minus 2, 5. When you have. This is the first diagonal. You put a mirror here, okay? 
of if all the elements are symmetric with respect to the first diagonal and they are the same, we call that a symmetric matrix. This is symmetric. So A is a symmetric matrix if A i j is equal to A j i. Okay? So for example, A42 is equal to A24. If I were you, I would listen to me rather than talk to each other. It's very important. It's very, very important. You will have at least a couple of questions in the final from these things, OK? So today's lecture, at least two final exam, at least two final exam questions. Today's lecture is the most important lecture of the year, OK? So therefore, listen very carefully. So A42 is equal to A24, A2, etc. So it satisfies this condition, OK? Symmetric. A is called a Hermitian matrix if A transpose conjugate is equal to A. So this is more general case. If A happens to have complex numbers as its elements, then Hermitian means you take complex conjugate of each element and take transpose of it. Example, A is equal to 0, doesn't have 1, 1 minus I, 2. What should I have here? For this to be Hermitian, hmm? one, one plus i. Yes, okay, is Hermitian. How about this? Is this Hermitian? No, it's just a complex matrix, ordinary complex matrix. How about this? Is this her mission? No. It has to have minus i, right? So you understand. So I'm not going to prove for symmetric matrices. I will prove it for her mission matrices because it also includes a her mission matrix is also symmetric matrix when A is real, right? If A is real, complex conjugate doesn't mean anything additional. It means just Every element is real means complex conjugate of a real element is itself. So therefore, I will talk about that. OK. So this again has very nice, beautiful properties. For any matrix A with real coefficients, do you? Have any guarantee that the eigenvalues will be real? For, for real matrices, can we say that the eigenvalues are real? Can we say that? No. Right? We gave an example. So a real matrix can have complex eigenvalues. But what do we know is that they are complex conjugates. So if you have a complex number as eigenvalue, then complex conjugate of that also is an eigenvalue if it has real coefficients. OK. Now, the first thing we will prove is that theorem, the eigenvalues of Hermitian matrices are real. So even if it has complex coefficients, if it is Hermitian, it is guaranteed to have real eigenvalues. OK? It has very simple and nice proof, so let's prove it. So x is an eigenvalue of a means ax is equal to lambda x, Hermitian or not. This is what it means, right? Let's take. 
star of this. Star means, star means, means take transpose plus complex conjugate. Okay, for example, one one minus i uh, i two minus two plus i star means one minus i one plus i and two minus i. Of course, this is not Hermitian, right? Star operation means take transpose and replace i by minus i. That's what it means. Did I do it wrong? Oh, OK, 1 plus i. So it goes there. Yeah. OK, so what would that mean? That would mean x star, this is matrix multiplication, like transpose here, x star, a star. And what is this? That is x star, and this would be lambda bar. Lambda is just a number, possibly a complex number. So you say complex conjugate of that, right? Is this clear? So this means transpose and complex conjugate, OK? That's what it means. So in, in, in order to not write this kind of things, we just put star there. Star means exactly that. Take transpose of the matrix. I replace every i by minus i. OK. What is a star? If it is, since it is Hermitian, since a is equal to a star, then what do you have here? x star is equal to x, x star a is equal to lambda bar, bar a star, right? On the other hand, what did I have here? Ax is equal to lambda x. Let me multiply this by x again here. What do I have? Multiply with x from right. What would I get here? x star a x, right? The other side, lambda bar, I'm sorry. Yeah, this is x star x. And let me multiply this by x star from right. <laughs> multiply by x star from right. What do you have in that case? x star a x is equal to lambda x star x. So what does this tell you? Lambda bar is equal to x star a x over x star x. And what does this tell you? Lambda is equal to x star ax over x star x. What does this tell you? Lambda is equal to lambda bar. For what lambdas this is the case? When complex conjugate of a number is equal to itself? Real number, right? That means lambda is real. Isn't this very nice and beautiful fact that without doing any computation, just from this property, we are able to find out that for a huge matrix, matrix one, 1 million by 1 million, if it is Hermitian, all of the lambdas are real numbers. That's a big, big result, right? Through the now, nicer results are coming. Any question? Who understood this? Who understood this? OK, good.
If you have any question, please stop me. Yes. Sure. Okay. We start from AX is equal to lambda X, right? This is definition of X being an eigenvector and lambda being an eigenvalue, right? If you are saying that we will use this definition of the eigenvector and eigenvalue and the fact that A is Hermitian. So we, this is just a simple trick here. You just take star of both sides, okay? So AX, what is the star of this? A is a matrix, X is a matrix, A times B transpose is in the reverse order, multiplication of transposes, right? Star also tells us that you should take complex conjugate of each number. So therefore, X star, A star. So A X star means X star. The right hand side would be, again, X would be X star, right? So it, it, it was a row, it was a column vector, it will be now a row vector, right? It will lie down now, it was standing up, it will lie down. And this lambda is just a scalar. You just take complex conjugate of it. Since, there is, since it's not a matrix, there is no transpose of it. So therefore, from here you have x star, a star equal to lambda bar x star. Here Hermitian comes into the picture. Since a star is equal to a, what do you have? x star a is equal to lambda bar x star, right? It didn't do anything. On the other hand, now we go back. Since AX is equal to lambda X, now let's multiply this by X star. So this is a column vector, right? Now first we did this, right? So let's continue from here. So you have a column vector equal to a column vector, a row vector, I'm sorry. It's a row, it's laid down, right? It's a, a row vector is equal to a row vector. These are equal. So you multiply them with x, a column vector. The result is a number, right? If you multiply a row vector by a column vector, it's inner product, isn't it? Inner product is a scalar number. So that would mean x star ax equal to lambda bar x star x. So this gives you one equation, and this, from here you can solve for lambda bar. Lambda bar is equal to x star ax divided by x star x. On the other hand, since ax is equal to lambda x, multiply this by x star from left. What do you have? x star ax lambda x star x. Lambda is just a constant, right? So this tells you lambda is equal to x star ax, but these are the same thing, isn't it? Therefore, these are the same thing, they are equal. See, if, since they are equal, these two are equal, right? So lambda is equal to lambda bar, and that means lambda is real. It does not have an imaginary part, right? You understood it now? Who else understood it now? Who understood this proof? This is simplest proof you can have, okay? Okay, now there is even a more beautiful theorem. It says that, theorem two. If for an Hermitian matrix, so for an Her a Hermitian matrix, meaning A is equal to A star, that means A complex conjugate transpose, okay? If lambda one is different from lambda two for any lambdas, okay? Then corresponding eigenvectors are orthogonal. Okay? Proof. Very easy to prove this as well. Okay? You just understand it like nothing. You have, let's say you have AX is equal to 
lambda 1 x. So this is one eigenvalue is lambda 1. This is Hermitian, of course. And the corresponding eigenvector is x. You have another eigenvector. Let's call it y. And eigenvector corresponding to that is lambda 2. OK? So lambda 1 different from lambda 2, a is equal to a star. Okay, these are the assumptions of the term. Okay, so so let's multiply this by y star. Okay, what do you have then? Y star is equal to a x lambda 1 y star x, right? And let's do another thing. Let's take transpose of this. Okay, so this is from here. And from here, I take, I take star of this, okay? Transpose conjugate. What do I have? Y star a star is equal to y star times lambda 2. I am not writing lambda 2 bar. Why? Because we already proved that it is real, right? It's a Hermitian matrix, therefore lambdas are real. Okay? So what do I do now? You learn the trick now, right? You multiply this with x. x from right. So what do you have? y star a star x is equal to lambda 2 y star x. What is a star x? What is a star? a, right? So this is equal to since a star is equal to a, we have y star a x is equal to lambda 2 y star x. And what was this? You have here y star a x is equal to lambda 1 y star x. So you subtract them, OK? What do you have? 0 is equal to lambda 1 minus lambda 2 times y star x. When can this be 0? If lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2, but we said they are, they are this thing. So then what do you have? y star x What does this mean? Orthogonal. Right? That is the definition of orthogonalness. End of the proof. The vectors are not always real. Yes, that's a good question. Vectors are real if it is a real symmetric matrix. OK? The eigenvalues are always real. So vectors do not have to be real. OK? So eigenvalues are always real if it is Hermitian. If the matrix is real and it is symmetric, then the eigenvectors are also real. Okay? Of course, eigenvalues are real. We already proved that. Okay. Let me do an example on this. Let's say A is equal to 0, 1, 1, 0. Is this a Hermitian matrix. Is it a Hermitian matrix? Yes. It's more than that. It is real symmetric matrix. Therefore, it is 
It is a symmetric matrix. On top of it, of course, it is a subset of Hermitian matrices. OK, so what do we know? The eigenvalues are real, right? OK, so therefore, let's find eigenvalues. A minus lambda i determinant has to be equal to 0. That's how we find eigenvalues, right? So what is that? So A, 0, 1, 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 0, 1 times lambda has to be equal to 0. So this means minus lambda, 1, 1 minus lambda has to be equal to 0, right? And what is the determinant here? Lambda square minus 1 is equal to 0. This is the determinant. So when is the determinant equal to 0? Lambda square is equal to 1. Lambda 1, 2 is equal to minus plus 1. OK? So we have now the eigenvalues. Yes, they are real. One of them is plus 1. One of them is minus 1. If I tell you, if I gave you this matrix and I told you that one of them is plus 1, can you find the other one without any computation at all? Trace. What is the trace equal to? We proved that last class. Sum of the eigenvalues, right? So if, since this trace is equal to 0, lambda one, if lambda 1 is equal to 1, then the other one has to be minus 1, so they add up to 0. So therefore, OK. So let's find the eigenvectors. Eigenvectors are what? These are the vectors that span the null space of A minus lambda i for lambda is equal to lambda 1. OK? You find x. So you substitute lambda equal to lambda 1 in A, A minus lambda i. Then what do you have? That is, is it a singular or non-singular matrix? For lambda equal to lambda 1, A minus lambda i, is it singular or non-singular? Singular. singular, right? That's the whole thing. That's, that's how we calculated the determinant, and we want to make sure that the determinant is 0. Therefore, it means it's singular. OK, so therefore, it is, so minus lambda, 1, 1, minus lambda, Substitute lambda equal to 1, OK? That is equal to minus 1, 1, 1, minus 1. So this is supposed to be singular, OK? This is a minus lambda 1 i. OK. x. So this x is now, since I have two distinct eigenvalues, I know that the null space has one dimension, right? So singularity is just one, one dimension of singularity. Therefore, null space has dimension one. OK, so that's equal to minus one, one, one minus one. So x1, x2 equal to 0, 0. So can you just tell me x1 and x2 here? Just 1, 1, right? So if you add these two columns, you get 0. So so eigenvector one, eigenvector corresponding to lambda one is equal to one is this. Is it the only eigenvector? Can you give me another solution? Two, two, five, five, hundred, hundred, right? So infinitely many. So there are infinitely many. Of course, this is the most logical one you pick. OK, how about for lambda equal to lambda two, a minus lambda two i? x. What would that be? Lambda is equal to what? Lambda 2 is equal to minus 1, right? So that would be 1, 1, 1, 1. x1, x2. So what is that going to give me? This lets me call this x1, let me call this x2, OK? This would be minus 1, 1, for example. OK, minus 1, 1. 
Let's pick the fruits of this even more. Okay. As you see, they are now real. I will also do a complex example. Okay, so you have 0, 1, 1, 0 is equal to times uh, 1, 1, right? And minus 1, 1 is equal to 1, 1, minus 1, 1 times, what is this? That is 1. So this is satisfied, right? So this is A, this is X, this is X, and this is lambda. Of course, I can take this X here by taking X inverse is what? X inverse is equal to determinant of this is what? 1 minus minus 1, so it's plus 1, so 1 over 2. What do I do here? Exchange this, interchange that, and this change the sign of these. So this is x inverse. So you have one half times zero one one zero times one one minus one one. I'm sorry. One one minus one one times a zero one one zero times one minus one 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 is equal to one zero. Okay. So if I were to ask you find the similarity transformation to diagonalize this matrix, this is what you would do. You would find the eigenvectors and form this x, and that's what you would have. Of course, we observe something here. We didn't need to do this, right? This is orthogonal, the columns of, didn't we prove that? When lambda 1 is, is not equal to lambda 2, then the columns are orthogonal. So are they orthogonal? Yes. You multiply them, you get 0. Therefore, how do you find the inverse of it? You just take transpose of it, even if it is 10-dimensional. You just take transpose of it and divide it by the determinant. Of course, to avoid determinant, what do we do? You make the columns as orthonormal. So you normalize each column so that they have norm equal to 1. In that case, it's just inverse of it. It would be equal to its transpose. OK. Another way to write this would be, OK, you have x inverse ax is equal to Lambda, right? A is equal to x lambda x inverse. So you have this, this relationship. You can write A as a similarity transformation on lambda, or lambda as a similarity transformation of x. Okay. So if I want to compute, for example, A square. I could do one thing. I could just keep multiplying this. Or what can I do? I can just use this eigenvalue decomposition of the matrix. Like this would be, of course, since it is Hermitian, I can further go ahead and say, and if I, if I normalize this, I can say x, x star for Hermitian matrices. Right? So a square is what? A times A. So that would mean x. This is A. This is also A, isn't it? So when you look at here, x inverse x is identity. That gives you x. That would mean x. Right? So if I want to compute a to the 100, what would this be? Can you tell me the result? a to the 100 would be what? 
Ibrahim, what would that be? Anybody? X? Lambda to the 100? X inverse. If her mission? Then A to the 100 is just X. How about the eigenvectors? Eigenvectors, so we can say the following. It's very careful, okay? I will give you an example. Every eigenvector of A is an eigenvector of A square, right? Or A cube. Can you say the other way around? You cannot. I will give you an example, okay? Be careful. So eigenvalues are related. So, so if I were to ask you this, you would do this, right? You would say that eigenvectors of A are eigenvectors of A to the 100. They don't change. OK, eigenvalues are related as such. Since it is a diagonal matrix, they are just the powers of the eigenvalues. But on the other hand, you cannot f uh, find the eigenvectors of this and say that they are eigenvectors of that as well. OK? Now, I will just give you a small example here. Remember this very carefully, OK? So I have a matrix. What are the eigenvalues of this? OK. Or I, I will make this one so that we, we don't get lost. OK. One, 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 one. OK. So what are the eigenvalues? A minus lambda i determinant equal to 0. That means 1 minus lambda, 1, 0, 1 minus lambda is equal to 0, right? And that means 1 minus lambda square is equal to 0. That means lambda 1 and 2 is equal to 0. So you have an eigenvalue lambda equal to 0. It has multiplicity 2. 1, yes. So 1 is an eigenvalue with multiplicity 2. Now we want to solve for the eigenvectors, right? So what do you, what do, you do for that? So a minus lambda 1i is equal to 1 minus 1. 1, 0, 1 minus 1. So what is that equal to? 0, 1, 0, 0. OK, you want to find the eigenvectors? So what do you get from here? The first one tells you that x2 is equal to 0, x1 is free. So eigenvector is 1 and 0. Any other eigenvector? Hmm? None. OK. Now let me take a square here. a square is what? Z 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. 0, 1. So what is this equal to? 1, 2, hmm. it was going to be 0. OK? Let me see what happens to this. 1, 2, so this is 1, 2, 0, 2. So this, this preserves that. So the counter example has to have this 0, OK? If a is 0, 1, 0, 0, a square is what? So what is this equal to? 0, 0, 0, 0, OK? So this is called nilpotent matrix. Score of it is 0, OK? So this would have these two matrix. This has lambda 1 equal to 0, lambda 2 equal to 0, right? This has also lambda 1 equal to 0, lambda 2 equal to 0. But what are the eigenvectors of this? Eigenvectors of a square. What are they? Are any, any vector in R2 
is an eigenvector. This has only one eigenvector, right? It has only that kind of eigenvector. So, of course, the eigenvector of this is, of course, eigenvector of that. There is no change in that one. But you cannot say the same thing the other way around. Okay? But for Hermitian, you can. In Hermitian case, it doesn't change. It's again another beautiful problem. Of course, Hermitian is very well structured. Now, what do we also need to, what is, there is one question you should ask. We talked about Hermitian matrices. We said that the eigenvalues are real. Whether it is complex or not, they are real, right? And we said if two eigenvalues are distinct, then corresponding eigenvectors are orthogonal. That's also we proved that. What is left? Another beautiful property is that in, for Hermitian matrices, you always have n linearly independent eigenvectors. And they are orthogonal. They can be selected as orthogonal. But what I mean is the following. Okay, so theorem, and I'm not going to prove this because it's going to take the rest of today. So we have other fishes to fry. So we cannot spend all of the time on that. Okay, so theorem, if A is a Hermitian matrix, then you can always find n linearly, n orthogonal. I, when I say orthogonal, that means they are linearly independent as well, right? Orthogonal eigenvectors. Okay, what I mean is the following. Okay, let's say I'm not going to prove this, but I will give you some idea of what I mean. Okay, let's say we have lambda 1 with multiplicity three and lambda 2 with multiplicity four. Okay, so we have two eigenvalues that have this three and four multiplicity. So what we know is that the null space of, for this case, A minus lambda one I, the null space will have dimension what? Has dimension what? Three, right? So it is spanned by three linearly independent vectors. And all these vectors are eigenvectors of A. Okay? Do they have to be orthogonal with respect to each other? No. It's just a subspace, isn't it? It's a subspace. It is now space of A minus lambda 1i. But you can always select them as orthogonal within them as, as a set of three vectors. You can always find infinitely many set of three vectors that they are orthogonal to each other, isn't it? But any one of them, even if they are orthogonal to each other, we know from the second theorem that they will be orthogonal to any vector in the, in the eigenspace associated with the lambda 2, right? For any any vector in the null space associated with lambda 1, which any eigenvector associated with lambda 1 is orthogonal to the any eigenvector associated with lambda 2. Who understood this sentence? <laughs> OK, it, do I still have it there? Didn't we prove that if, if lambda 1 is different from lambda 2 and a is equal to a star, then x is orthogonal to y, right? So if lambda 1, if there is a lambda 1, an eigenvalue of a, 
let's say it has eigenvector x, any one of the vectors in this eigenspace, right? And there's another eigenvector associated with lambda 2. It's another separate eigenspace, right? So these are, these are spanning vectors of different null spaces associated with different matrices. This matrix A minus lambda 1i and A minus lambda 2i, these are two different matrices, isn't it? This has, these are two matrices, two separate matrices. They are related, of course, but this is, for example, this is, this null space of this has dimension three, null space of this has dimension four, or it could be a one and one. Right? It could be, these are two matrices. But what we know is that any vector in the null space of this matrix is orthogonal to the null, any vector in the null space of this matrix. When? When A is Hermitian. That's the only case, right? On top of it, let's say this has multiplicity three, right? You can find three vectors that spans the null space of this, right? We learned this so many weeks. We talked about it. We asked about this in two midterms and everything. You know how to find the vectors that span the null space of a, a singular matrix, right? But they don't have to be orthogonal within themselves, right? But how can you orthogonalize them after you find three, three, three linearly independent vectors that span the null space of A minus lambda 1i? How can you make sure that you find an orthogonal set of vectors that span the same subspace? Graham Schmidt, right? So everything comes together. So you can, after you find three vectors, linearly independent vectors that span the null space of A minus lambda 1i, then you can use Gram-Schmidt in principle and find three orthonormal, a set of orthonormal three vectors that span the same thing, okay? You know that whichever one you take from them, they will be orthogonal to the subspace. And you can do the same thing for this null space and every other one, okay? So proving this will take a bit of time, and I have left to talk about other things as well. So I thought about it, but I decided that it's better I leave it for you something to read, but I'm not going to ask you to prove it, of course, since I didn't show it to you. Okay? I promised that I was going to do a complex example as well. Now let me do that one. I will again take a very simple example. Okay, i minus i zero. So a is equal to a star, right? How do I know that? Just take a transpose is equal to zero minus i i zero. Okay, then take star of bar of this, then this is zero i minus i zero. Okay, so it's Hermitian. So we know that the eigenvalues are real and etc. Okay, let's continue now. So let's find the eigenvectors, eigenvalues and eigenvectors A minus lambda i has to be equal to zero. That means lambda i minus i minus lambda minus lambda has to be equal to zero. Okay, what is that? Lambda square minus i times i equal to zero. What is that? So this is lambda square plus i square is equal to zero. What is i square? Minus one. So lambda square minus one is equal to zero. So lambda one, two is equal to plus and minus. So it has, as expected, it has, even if it has complex coefficients, it has two real eigenvalues, okay? Now let's find the eigenvectors of it, okay? So eigenvectors.
A minus lambda 1 I okay, is equal to So let's call lambda 1 equal to i. Okay. So it is minus i, i, minus i, minus i. Okay. So a minus lambda 1 i times x1, x2 should be equal to 0. What does that mean? Minus i i minus i minus i should be x1 should be equal to 0, 0. Of course, this is but by minus 1. Lambda, lambda 1 is equal to huh, 1, of course, of course. Otherwise, it wouldn't have, right? <laughs> okay? Yes. So, what does this mean? What should, what is, tell me a solution for this. So, this is minus x1 plus i times x2 is equal to 0. The other one gives you minus i times x1 minus x2 is equal to 0. Okay, what is the solution for this? This tells you x1 should be equal to i x2. Substitute in here, what do you have? Minus i times i x2, right? This is x1. Minus x2 should be equal to 0, and that tells you minus i square, which is minus i square is 1. So x2 minus x2 is equal to 0. OK? So this is satisfied for all x2, right? So what is the solution for this? Let's make a break. And we are all tired, so after five minutes, let's continue. OK, let's continue. So we stopped here. So basically, what we found is x1 is equal to ix2, and there is no condition x. It is second. So that means you take, just take x2 as 1 free variable, and x1 is i. So this is eigenvector is i and 1. So what was the question? You remember, are the eigenvectors real? Who asked this question? In a Hermitian matrix, so eigenvectors do not have to be completely real, right? So eigen, even if eigenvalues are real, the eigenvectors can be complex. So one eigenvector we found here, so x2, second equation is satisfied. x1 is equal to i x2, so I take x2 is free variable, take it 1, and the x1 is just i. So i and 1. And the other eigenvector would be a minus lambda 2 i, that is equal to um, minus, minus 1 i minus i minus minus 1. So that is 1i minus i and 1. So a minus lambda 2i times x1, x2 is equal to 1i minus i. 1 times x1, x2 equal to 0, 0. So that gives us x1 plus i, x2 equal to 0 minus ix1 plus x2 equal to 0. And that would give you x is equal to minus i and 1. OK? So you have two eigenvectors. Since the matrix is complex, 
eigenvectors can be complex. And eigenvalues are, of course, real. Any question on this one? OK, we didn't do any mistake here. OK, so the second equation didn't give us any condition. x2 cancels x2. x2 is free variable. Take it one, and just i and 1 is the eigenvector, and the other one is minus i. OK, the question was, please ask it again. Yes. Why x inverse equal x star? OK. That's the theorem we just wrote here. So we said that if A is a Hermitian matrix, meaning if A is equal to A star, OK? Even if you don't have distinct eigenvectors, eigenvalues, you will have, you can have always and linearly independent eigenvectors. On top of it, they are orthonormal. Okay? So if A star, then R or can be chosen as orthonormal. Vectors. Okay, I tried to explain this. Said if the eigenvectors are for uh, different eigenvalues, you necessarily have orthogonal eigenvectors. Okay, they are orthogonal. We proved that. If they are not distinct, then they are within a null space. You can always using Gram-Schmidt process algorithm, you can always f find a set of orthonormal vectors. Therefore. For, ortho, for Hermitian matrices, you can talk about Ax is equal to x lambda and x star x is equal to x x star, and that's equal to identity. Okay? So this is. Why do we say that? Because x is equal to u1 u2, un, ui star uj. You remember this, what this means, Kronecker symbol. This is equal to 1 when i is equal to j. It's equal to 0 otherwise. So norm of every vector is equal to 1. If you multiply inner product of any two vectors in this set, gives you 0, right? So this will necessarily give you that, OK? For the example we did, so the x is, for the example, x is i and 1 and minus i and 1. Of course, is this an orthonormal set, orthonormal set of vectors here? It is not, right? We have to take. We have to divide each by its length. What is the length of this vector? So how do you, so if you have x is equal to i1, what do you say? It's x star x is equal to norm of x square, right? It's length square. So what would that be? That would be equal to x star x is equal to i minus i1, i1. That is equal to 1 plus 1, 2. OK? So we have to divide this square root of 2. If you divide this by square root of 2, then this is an orthogonal matrix having orthonormal uh, columns. Or rows, right? Rows are also time. So this x star x is what? This is supposed to be equal to identity, isn't it? So let's look at that. X star is x star is is this Hermitian by the way? 
No, it doesn't have to be Hermitian, right? This is orthogonal. Orthogonal doesn't mean Hermitian. X star is minus i this 1, i, and 1, times i minus i, 1, 1, and 1 over 2. So this is equal to minus i square plus 1, which is 2, minus i square, which is minus 1, plus 1 is 0, this is i square plus 1 is 0, and this is 1 minus i square it is 2. So it is identity. OK? Any question so far? Who understood Hermitian matrices? Who understood it a little bit? OK. Which? point is not clear, because this is very important. I will talk about now positive definite matrices and singular, singular value decomposition. All of those depend on this, OK? So where do you have a problem? Please tell me. On eigenvalues and Hermitian matrices, symmetric matrices, where do you have some problem understanding anything? Please. This theorem. This theorem is very simple. It says that if a matrix is Hermitian, you can always find n eigenvectors, meaning for even if it has multiplicity, that these eigenvectors are orthonormal. All of them are orthonormal. Okay? Can you say this in general for a general matrix? Meaning, if it is not Hermitian, if I give you any matrix, can you say this? Can you find? Can you all forget about being orthonormal? Can you always guarantee that there are n eigenvectors? Of course not, right? The example we did here is 0, 1, 0, 0, right? It has just one eigenvector. It has two eigenvalues, but one eigenvector. But in her, for Hermitian matrices, you are always guaranteed to have n linearly independent, and on top of it, orthogonal eigenvectors. OK? Even if you have all of them, even if all of them are equal, if all of them are equal, of course, what are the eigenvectors? I, it's, uh, any, any vector, it's a good example, OK? It, it helps us. Uh, identity matrix, is, is it a Hermitian matrix, identity matrix? It is the king of her Hermitian matrices, right? It is the, it's the best uh, Hermitian matrix you can have. It's just identity matrix. It's symmetric. It's everything. And all of the eigenvalues are equal to 1. OK? What are the eigenvectors? Any vector is an eigenvector, right? OK? Can you find n linearly independent eigenvectors? Yes. You can. It's like a matter of fact, it is just 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, the standard thing. Why? Right? Because it's equal to Rn. If it was, if the eigenspace is not n dimensional, it's a subspace, then it's not that easy, right? Then you have to find the vectors that span that subspace, then you have to construct using the Gram Schmidt. That number of orthogonal, orthonormal vectors spanning the same subspace, right? I think the confusion is there. So if the eigen, if eigenvalues are distinct for a Hermitian matrix, any, eigen, any two eigenvectors in two different eigen subspace, they are orthogonal necessarily, okay? Even if you wanted to, otherwise you couldn't do it. But within an eigen subspace, if it is, has dimension more than one, they can be non-orthogonal, of course. They will be linearly independent to be able to call them uh, eigenvectors, separate eigenvectors. But they don't have to be orthogonal. So therefore, we have to find other eigenvectors spanning the same subspace and they are so within that uh, eigen subspace. Yes? I don't understand why we call the identity matrix as Hermitian. 
Okay, is transpose of d equal to itself? Then by definition, it's a Hermitian matrix. Uh, it has no elements It can be a very simple Hermitian matrix. It doesn't have to be. You see, real, a real symmetric matrix is also a Hermitian matrix. It's a special case of it. So real numbers are also complex numbers with no imaginary part. Okay? Zero. Okay? Who wants to explain this? Maybe with different sentences. This term. What, what, what am I talking about here? Okay, let me listen. To who, who, is, who is going to volunteer to tell us what this theorem is saying? No volunteers? <laughs> Okay. Yes. Same null space. Yes. Uh -huh. The question here, let's, let's just very precisely define your question. What you are saying is that I have any matrix A, okay? Not necessarily Hermitian, not Hermitian even, okay? And I have an eigenvalue lambda 1 with multiplicity, let's say 2, just to make it more clear, okay? So I have two eigenvectors, okay, that span this eigenspace. What is that eigenspace? It is dimensional, two-dimensional eigenspace associated with, of course you can find two orthogonal eigenvectors within that thing. It doesn't mean they will be orthogonal with other subspaces, right? You cannot do that. You cannot, you cannot also find, uh, you cannot make, so these, these vectors that you, uh, you compute or construct using Gram-Schmidt, they will be orthogonal uh, with respect to each other, but they are not going to be orthogonal to the other vectors in the other subspaces, other, lambda. other lambdas. They are not going to be orthogonal Would to the other. Be as well, uh, eigenvector for that lambda? Of course, they will be orthogonal for one lambda. So are, uh, eigenvectors are associated with the lambdas, OK? Let me just. So we have a, let's say, a matrix n by n, right? So this has, let's say, lambda 1 is not Hermitian necessarily, is an eigenvalue with multiplicity let's say 2, right? You have another eigenvalue, let's say multiplicity one. Okay? Let's think of this. So what does this mean? This means that A minus lambda one I, this matrix has a null space, has a null space. with dimension of null space of, let's go back to that. You just connect these things together, OK? That's what it means, OK? Which means it has two linearly independent vectors spanning it. Okay. So you can find for any subspace, right? If I give you any two vectors and I tell you, if I give you any linear independent two vectors, what can you tell me? 
What is the subspace associated with those, with those, with them? You take all possible linear combinations of those two vectors. What does that create? That creates not R2. That creates, it's not R2. It's a two-dimensional subspace of Rn. Okay, if it is an N, if it has N components, it's a two-dimensional, it's a surface, right? It's a surface in N-dimensional space. And it is defined by those two vectors. The question is that Husni was asking, can I find two orthogonal vectors spanning the same, same subspace? The answer is yes, right? So you can find two ortho orthogonal vectors spanning this exact same subspace using Gram-Schmidt. So you take one of them, scale it, and then you take the other one and subtract the projection of this to this previous vector and obtain an orthogonal vector to that, and that will span exact same subspace, okay? Okay, but that doesn't tell you anything about that it's going to be orthogonal to this null space, the vectors that span the null space of this, okay? They are, they are going to be linearly independent, so any, Vector in this subspace is, will be linearly independent from this one. But it's not going to be necessarily orthogonal to <coughs> any vector here, okay? So these are going to be, you can construct it so that they are orthogonal. You are gonna do the same thing here, okay? For when, they, when this Hermitian, again, you have, let's say a multiplicity, multiplicity two, then you'll have two vectors spanning a subspace associated with that lambda. What we are saying is that you can, you should pick it as orthogonal because the rest of them are orthogonal anyway. So pick them orthogonal, normalize them so that you have a full set of orthonormal set of uh, eigenvectors, okay? Here, you can have, by doing this, you can have your x, okay? You will have, let's say, x1, x2, then you will have here u3, u4. These are going to be orthonormal. Then you will have x20, x21, and then you will have maybe x u22, u23, u24, okay? Maybe you have thousands of columns like this, so you can have these orthonormal within themselves, okay? When it comes to how about, how about we make all of these orthonormal? You can, but you cannot say that they are eigenvectors anymore. Individually, they are not eigenvectors anymore. They span the same subspace, okay? That's the confusion, I guess. So we are done with this one and this one. Now come to these two. Positive definiteness. So, this is defined normally for Hermitian matrices, okay? So, given a Hermitian matrix. A is equal to A star, okay? Then A is called positive definite. if x star a x greater than zero for all x different from zero. Okay, this is called positive definiteness. This is the definition of it. 
of course, it is very, very important, again, in many areas of engineering. In control theory, we use this a lot for stability tests, etc. So how do we test this? So when can we have this? For example, let me have a simple Hermitian matrix. Let's say A is equal to uh, 1, 0, 0, 2. Okay? Is this positive definite? Of course, you wouldn't know. Is, is this positive definite? So we just apply the definition. X star AX is equal to, since this is 2 by 2, I just take X1 star, X2 star, 1, 0, 0, 2, x1, x2. So this gives me x1 star, 2, x2 star, x1, x2. And that would be x1 star. Of course, it's not x1 star, x1 bar, right? It's, since it is just scalar, we don't use star. We use star for x1 bar or x1 plus 2 x2 bar x2. So what is x1 bar x1? x1. It is? No. Complex conjugate. So if you have a complex number a plus ib, complex conjugate of it is a minus ib. So when you multiply, it's just a square plus b square. So it is x1 length of x1 square plus 2 length of x2 square. Okay? Is this always positive for non-zero x? It is, right? This is greater than 0 if x is different from 0. So what do we say? This a is positive definite. Okay? How about this is a very simple matrix. How about other matrices? Let's say I have A is just A star, and that's all. I don't know anything else about it. It's Hermitian. Is this, how can we determine positive definiteness of this? How would you proceed? You would find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, right? Then you would write, you would obtain eigenvalues then you would obtain a is equal to x lambda x star right for this just stacking them together where x is x1 x2 xn and these are ortho normal set of columns. Okay? Then what can I say about this positive definiteness? X star AX would be equal to what? X star X. Oh, this, they call this Y star. Y star, Y is a vector, right? Y star A Y is equal to what? Y star, why do I write it twice? Y star, I use here now this, X lambda X star and Y. Consider this, this now, okay? <coughs> Let's call this Z. So what can I say? This is Z star lambda Z, isn't it? Who is following so far? Good, great. So Z is just a vector, a complex vector, Z1, Z2, Zn, isn't it? 
Please stop me when you don't understand. Probably there are many other people who didn't understand, so do not hesitate. There is nothing magical here. So, so A is equal to X. So for any Hermitian matrix can be written in this form. We just talked about this for the last one and a half hour, right? So we can find eigenvalues, eigenvectors, and we can do this. So this, we call this quadratic form, okay? That's equal to y star x lambda x star y. So we call this z, and this becomes z star z star lambda z. And that is z1, z2, zn times lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n. This is lambda matrix, z1, z2, zn. OK, if you multiply this, okay, multiplication of this with this matrix will be what? Lambda 1 times z1 bar. This second element, lambda 2 times z2 bar, right? Lambda n times zn bar. This is z1, z2, zn. And that's equal to what? Lambda 1, z1 bar, z1. Lambda 2, z2 bar, z2. Lambda n, zn bar, zn. What are these? z1 bar, z1. What is this? Exactly, length square, right? Z1 length square. Lambda 2, Z2 length square. Lambda N. Okay. So, if, let's say, lambda 1 is minus 1, can you find a Z vector for me that will make this equal to minus 1? Be careful. If, if lambda 1 is minus 1, how would you pick z vector? Ibrahim, how would you pick it? Exactly. I would pick z equal to 1, 0, 0, 0. OK, in that case, this will be 1, and all these will be 0. And this lambda 1 is minus 1, so it will be negative, right? How about if lambda 2 is, is some negative number? How would you pick your z vector to make it negative? Similarly, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, right? So how about if all of my lambdas are positive? Can you pick your z vector in some way to make this negative? No. So what is a criteria for being positive definite? OK, that's a theorem now. We proved it, right? If, so theorem. If A is equal to A star and lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n, or satisfied, then A is positive definite. So that is definition. This is a way to guarantee that that, uh, that is satisfied. So this is an if and only if, right? We, we here prove that. If you have any eigenvalue that is negative, you can just pick a z. Of course, that's, we can pick z. That means you can pick y as well, right? What would be y? y would be equal to xz. So that they have one-to-one -one correspondence. So you can always find, as a matter of fact, what would that be? That would be the first column of x. That would be the first eigenvector. It's not that difficult, really. It's not magical. OK, you would just pick as your z, you would pick the eigenvector corresponding to that negative eigenvalue. In that case, this quadratic form will give you the value of the eigenvector. OK?
the value of the eigenvalue. Okay? Yes? It's the scalar, of course, isn't it? But AX, you have matrix A multiplied with a vector X. What do you get? You get a vector. If you have X star, meaning X transpose, a horizontal vector multiplied with a vertical vector, what does it give you? It's an inner product, right? It gives you a scalar. Isn't it lambda, What? X, X, X star, X just is a vector. Hmm? It is, it's a vector. Okay. Okay, so I should write bar like this. <laughs> okay. So it's a vector. For any Y. For any Y. Not for one, for any. For all. So one test is this. Lambda 1 is greater than 0, lambda 2 is greater than If, so what do we say? If I give you a, a matrix A, a Hermitian matrix A, and ask you, is this positive definite? You will either do this, just directly try to prove that x star AX cannot be negative, or you will tell me, sir, there is a theorem that says that if for a Hermitian matrix, if the eigenvalues are positive, then the Hermitian matrix is positive definite, meaning x star a x is guaranteed to be positive. Okay? There is another case. If any one of the, if this can be also zero, not negative, but zero, then we call it positive semi-definite. Okay? And that will happen when one or more of these lambdas are equal to zero. Okay? Yes. <coughs> sure. What we are saying is that we, have, we are given a Hermitian matrix. Hermitian matrix has this kind of decomposition. We just proved that, right? So you can have x lambda x star where the columns of x are eigenvectors of A, okay? And they are orthonormal, okay? So we pick them orthonormal, as we discussed between you and me, right? So therefore, we say that let's calculate the quadratic form for this Hermitian matrix. So Y star AY. And here I submitted here A equal to this, X lambda X star. And this portion now I called it Z. So this X star Y, I renamed it. Okay? Like we, so many times we did in other cases, right? Like LU factorization, and how to solve system of linear equations. We always did this kind of thing. So, so I just do it quickly. So we call this Z then because this is Z star, isn't it? So this is Z star, a diagonal matrix times Z. What are these diagonals? These are the lambdas of A. So when we look at Z star, this vector Z1, since it is a star, it has to lie down. Normally, vector is a column. It becomes a row. So Z1 bar, Z1 conjugate, Z2 conjugate, Zn conjugate, this and that. When you multiply this, this means multiplication of these two means lambda 1, Z1 bar, lambda 2, Z2 bar, lambda and Zn bar. So we multiply it together, lambda 1, Z1 bar, Z1. And this means the length of square. So you have this. So when, and then I, I asked the question, if lambda 1 is negative, can someone tell me? Please, let me repeat that question. OK, when lambda 1 is negative, can you give me a z that will make this negative? <coughs> An example of z. I'm not saying for every z. I just, all I need is just one z, right? One z vector. So what will that be? One zero zero zero. If lambda if if lambda n was negative, can you give me a vector, a z vector that will achieve that lambda n in this quadratic form? Zero 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 one. Okay. Is it clear to everybody? 
So it's for sure you will have this kind of questions in the final line. If you miss them, it's silly, right? So please ask. We will do examples in the afternoon as well, I mean, in the evening. Yes? You didn't understand it. OK, where did you get stuck? Which, which stage? Just negative. Negative, oh, OK. Here, we are just challenging. We are saying that for any y, no matter what you take y, this should be greater than 0. I erased it. Okay. For any y, if this is, no matter what you take your y vector, this should be greater than y or z, or you call it any name you want, right? It doesn't matter. If you find a counterexample, that means it's not positive definite. Okay? So you can find. One billion vectors that will make this positive. But if you can just find one vector that is negative, that means that matrix is not positive definite. OK? So this, we said that in general, for a Hermitian matrix, A is equal to A star, right? The question starts here. A equal to A star. It has eigenvalues and eigenvectors defined like this. You form your x vector. These columns are just the eigenvectors of A, right? So they form an orthonormal set of vectors. So therefore, this x becomes an orthogonal matrix. Orthogonal matrix means x star x equal to x x star equal to identity. Therefore, A for a Hermitian matrix again can be written as x gamma, x lambda, lambdas are just eigenvalues on the diagonal, x star, OK? So I said, let me continue here. So A can be written like this. So let me compute the quadratic form for this, OK? So y, y star A, Y is equal to Y star. So this is what? This is A, isn't it? This is A. OK? Did you get it? Y is any vector, not random vector. We ch the, the definition challenges you find. Can you find any Y that will make this negative? OK? That's the challenge. That's the definition of it. OK? So when you use this diagonal form of A here, we said that, OK, let's call this z. So this becomes z star lambda z. And for every y, you have a z. Why is that? Why is that? For every y, you have a corresponding z. Because z is equal to x star y. And y is equal to xz, isn't it? This is a, a non-singular matrix. It's more than that. It is an orthogonal matrix. It has an inverse. It's equal to its transpose. Therefore, for every z, you can find an y. And for every y, you can find a z. So this one to one correspondence. So I just wrote this. OK? z1, so this z star means a column vector becomes a row vector. This is complex conjugate of z1, z2, zn. And this is the diagonal matrix z1, z2, zn. You multiply them out, and this is the result. Then we again make the challenge. OK, is there, can you find any, any vector z that will make this negative? That's the question. The answer is, if lambdas are all positive, I cannot. I can, smallest I can do this is 0, and I, I have to pick z equal to 0. OK? But if I have any of the lambdas is negative, I know how to where to hit it, right? You know where it hurts. How would you pick z? How would you pick, as a matter of fact, y? How would you pick y? Just from here, even forget this. You have an eigenvalue that's equal to minus 1. And the corresponding eigenvector is x1. How would you pick your y vector? To, so that this quadratic form achieves that value. 
you would pick that eigenvector, right? You would pick the eigenvector, so ax would give you minus 1 times x vector. x star x is just 1. It gives you minus 1. Who understood this? Not enough. Let me do an example, another example. Let me talk about, uh, I will do examples in the afternoon. Let me talk about other ways of proving this, okay? So one way is, so the definition is the quadratic form has to be positive, okay? That's the definition of positive definiteness. So if you have, so tests, other tests, Okay, so you have a matrix, it's a determinant test. If you have a matrix A, okay, A11, A12, A21, A22, ANN, and A is equal to A star. Then the condition is that A11, determinant of A11 should be zero. For determinant of A11 is what? Just A11, right? A11 should be zero. Then determinant of this, these determinants all have to be zero. A11, A12, A21, A22 should be greater than zero. Determinant of A11, A12, A13, these all have to be greater than zero, okay? This is the determinant test. Example. If I give you a matrix A, let's say 1, uh, 0, 1, 0, of course, 2, 1, 1, 0, 5, okay, is a positive definite. One way is to find the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors as we did and see if the eigenvectors are positive, then it's positive definite, okay? So without doing that, using the determinant, you can achieve the same thing. Of course, this needs, this needs to be proved. I'm not gonna prove it, we don't have time. So what do I say? So A11 is equal to one, it's greater than zero, checks. Is it enough? No. Now I need to check 1, 0, 0, 2. Determinant of this is equal to 2. Is it greater than 0? Is it enough? No. Right? I need to now check the determinant of the entire matrix. 1, 0, 1, 0, 2, 1, 1, 0, 5. What is this equal to? 1 times, so this is 2, 1, 0, 5 minus plus 0, 1, 2, 1, plus, minus, plus, 2, 1, 0, 5, 0, 1, 2, 1. Okay, this is equal to 10, and this is equal to, minus so this is equal to 8. So is this matrix positive definite? Answer. Yes. Okay? It's positive definite. Of course, we are talking about symmetric matrices. Okay? We are not talking about any matrix. So if I ask you 
a question that is not symmetric, and I tell you this, you start applying this, you will get zero, and uh, I will say you didn't, this was valid for symmetric matrices, so you should know what you are doing. Okay? Of course, not only Nurullah, for all of you, it applies to all of you. Okay. Another test. Given A is equal to A star, A is positive definite. If all pivots in Gaussian elimination are positive. You like this, right? This is much simpler. So you just take, again, any symmetric matrix, OK? A, you apply Gaussian elimination to this to bring it to what? So this is d1, d2, dn, 0, right? If all these are positive, remember this. If all these are positive, then the matrix is positive definite. <coughs> As a matter of fact, it's not, they are not equal to lambdas. Yes. So as far as positive definite, they are not equal to lambdas, but the number of negative and positive and zero, these are equal to the same number of negative, positive, F, zero, lambdas, okay? So that's, so they are uh, related in that sense, okay? So that they have same number of, the number of negative pivots are equal to the number of negative eigenvalues, okay? Number of positive of them are the same number. So they are related in that sense. Okay, let me do an example. Let me take the same example as a matter of fact. Okay, 1, 0, 1, 0, 2, 1, 1, 0, 5. Okay, so 1, 0, 1, 0, 2, 1, and this is 0, and this is. Yanlış mı yaptım? Symmetric. Huh. Oh. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I meant this is anyway. So we made a mistake, it didn't change it. <laughs> the example was wrong. Okay? Yes. Let's pick this correct. Okay? So let's, this is one, so this was one, one, okay? Let's, let's do this example. We'll go back to that, okay? So one, zero, one, zero, two, one. So zero, and this is one and five. And next step, one, zero, one, zero, two, one, and this is zero, zero, half of this is subtracted from that one. So this is 9 over 2. Is this positive definite? Yes, because all the pivots are positive. Let's go back to this one. Let's do this again. OK. Thank you very much. So this is um, 1, 2, 0, 0. That's correct. And this one is one zero one, and this is one. So two one one five, okay. And this is zero one two one, and this becomes ten minus one, so it is nine. This minus two, so it is seven. Answer yes. 
OK. Let me tell you something very nice here. OK. This Gaussian elimination for symmetric matrices, it produces a very strong another result. OK. When you apply E1 and E2 and E, let's say, L or E, T, you obtain a U, right? An upper triangular matrix like this. This is U. If you do the same thing, transpose of it from the other side, OK? Let's call this, all of it combined, let's call it E. If you do the following, E, A, E transpose, what happens is this. This becomes D1, D2, Dn, 0, 0, OK? As a matter of fact, in other words, this becomes A, some L, some D, and L transpose. This is correct for, for Hermitian matrices. And this is called Charles key factorization. After a French guy who died in 1918. So he invented this in 1918. But I also invented it afterwards. I found out that somebody else did it for 101 years ago. <laughs> OK? I, I had to invent this to prove that set of uh, eigenvectors. Uh, so for Hermitian matrix, you have an independent set of eigenvectors. OK? So this is a very beautiful result. Since it is symmetric, in, the idea goes like this. At every step, when I subtract this from this, I do the same thing, and I subtract uh, this from this, OK? Then I go and subtract this from this, a multiple of this from this, then I go and do subtract a multiple of this from that. So I continue like that, and then I arrive at a nice diagonal matrix like that, OK? Another way, of course, would be, so let me give you another way how we can prove this is if you can somehow write A is equal to B, B star, and B is non-singular, then A is positive definite. Of course, this is trivial, right? This is trivial. So proof. So x star ax is equal to x star b, b star x. So you just call this z. So this is z star z. This is just length of z squared. So when is this? When, when is this equal to 0? This can not be negative, for sure. But when can it be 0? When, if z is 0. So when can z be 0? If b is singular, it can be 0. OK? Or x is, if b is not singular, then the only way z can be 0 is if x is 0. So that's, that's another way of proving positive definiteness. Of course, you do not necessarily uh, start from A and come up with this. In engineering problems, what will happen is that somehow, from some development of some operations, you will come up with something that is something times transpose of that, OK? Then you say that this is positive definite. So don't think of it that we will, all, we will, come, we will start from A and find B, B star. You will find out that you face with something, B, B star, then you say, OK, if B is not singular, 
it can be any matrix, right? It doesn't have to be Hermitian or anything. It can be any matrix, then BB star is positive definite, obviously. Okay? Okay, this is as far as positive definiteness is concerned. The last topic is singular value decomposition. Singular value. Composition. Okay, given any matrix, not Hermitian or any, just any any matrix, no condition. A M by N. What we are saying is a very nice thing. You can write a is equal to some U sigma V transpose, okay? Where U transpose U is equal to identity, V transpose V is equal to identity, uh, sigma is, is equal to sigma 1, 0, 0, zero sigma two. Okay. Of course, since this is M by N, this would be M by M, and this would be M by N, this would be N by N, right? So the sigma, if A is not a square matrix, then you would have a non-square sigma, okay? Now I will explain what these are. Okay. Isn't this a very beautiful result when you look at it? So any matrix can be written in terms of two orthogonal matrices and one diagonal matrix with positive real elements. So these are called singular values. Okay? And this is called singular value decomposition. So given for any matrix A, how can I compute this U and V and sigma? I would start from here, right? Let me calculate A star. Okay, let me call this V star, since we said any, so it let's allow the complex as well. A star A is equal to what? V sigma transpose U star. This is A star, right? What is A? U sigma V star. So what do you have here? This is identity, isn't it? So you have V sigma transpose sigma, right? Times V star. What can you tell me about this matrix? We just talked about it, right? It's not A square. Is this Hermitian? Is this her mission? So let me let me take star of this. What is this star of this? Like transpose, right? So the first one, a star, a star, star. What is a star star? Like transpose of transpose. What is it? A. So it is her mission. This is her mission, right? So what can you tell me about V? The columns of V, V are the eigenvectors ortho, orthonormal eigenvectors of A star 
A. Okay. Okay, this sigma transpose sigma. Now this is a square matrix, right? So what are these? Is this diagonal? Yes. It is diagonal. Like sigma is something like this. Okay, sigma 1, sigma 2, let's say sigma r. So we, let's say we have this, and you have m columns. So you have here m minus uh, r, zero matrix. Then you have here what? These are all zeros. Then what would you have here? So total is n. So you would have here how many? This would be how many columns here? N minus R, right? So if you multiply this together, so this is you have M and you have N, right? So A star A would give you, A, a is M by N, so this would be, what is the dimension of A star A? n by n, right? It would be n by n. So this would be n by n, then the dimension, the diagonal would be, so this would be lambda 1 of a star a, lambda 2 of a star a, right? Lambda n of a star, a lambda r of a star n, then you would have possibly zeros, right? This is This is lambda of A star A. So you connect it with the Hermitian matrices, OK? This, is, this doesn't mean multiple or anything. Like this is like lambda of this, OK? That matrix, lambda of. This is, this is what it means. Who understood what this means? Did you understand this? You did not. <laughs> OK, did you understand this? This is lambda 1. Lambda 1 of what? A star A, okay? That's what I mean here, okay? okay? These are the eigenvalues of that, okay? So this, I don't want to confuse you. So that's equal to sigma transpose sigma. So you can compute V star. You can compute V from the, as the eigenvectors of A, okay? How about U? How do I compute you? Who's going to tell me how to compute the orthogonal matrix U? Come on. Huh? How do I get it? Similarly, right? Just look at that. Now I want V to disappear in the process. I want something to end up with U. What should I do? Just mimic this. A, A star. OK, let's compute A, A star. Ah. Of course, you are tired. In the afternoon, let's do one Chosky uh, question. OK, let me solve one question for you. I want you to see that. OK, A, A star will be what? U. Sigma V star, this is A, right? <coughs> Times V sigma U star. Okay? So let's remove this parenthesis. What is this? Identity, right? So U sigma transpose. So U sigma sigma transpose u star. So this is a Hermitian matrix, isn't it? A, A star is also Hermitian. Is it equal to A star A? Of course not. They are both Hermitian, but they are not equal. Right? Do they have the same eigenvectors? Yes, they have the same non-zero eigenvectors. But they are not equal, OK? So this 
u, the columns of u, you are the orthonormal. Okay, I will write it again here so that you don't miss it. Orthonormal set of eigenvectors of a a star. Okay, that's it. So let's do an example. Let's say a is equal to one, two, three. A can be a three by one matrix, right? So what is a a star a is one, two, three times one, two, three. <coughs> okay. So A star A is equal to what are the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this? It's just equal to 14, right? Okay. So what is A, A star? That's equal to 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Okay. What are the eigenvalues of this? One of them is 14. What is the... Now, what is the dimension of the null space of this? Is it one? Two. Okay. So this, this has, you can find two eigenvectors that, two vectors that are orthogonal to this, right? This is in th three dimension. So you can always find two other vectors that are orthogonal to this. It is going to take a lot of time. So let's do this example in the afternoon. Okay. Let me give you one more definition. Polar decomposition of A. These are again nothing new, but polar decomposition. Of A. So if you have an A, you can have a singular value decomposition like this. But you can do the following, U sigma, U star, U V star. This is a symmetric matrix times a Q, orthogonal matrix. So they call this polar decomposition. These have applications like in elasticity theory and mechanical engineering and civil engineering and other areas. They ha that has a physical meaning. So it means you have uh, internal torsion in one of them, and the other one is that you have a symmetric uh, expansion, okay, stretch of a matter. Okay. That's the end of the lecture. And this afternoon, we will have three hours this evening. And from the beginning of the course, we will do as many examples and problems as we can solve. And if you have any further questions with regards to what we did today, so you can go on and study, you can ask me this evening. OK, we will solve questions and answer questions. But as far as course coverage, we covered everything we promised. OK, it was very nice lecturing you. Look forward to seeing you in other courses.